Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I have an exciting video plan after it has been so long since I've filmed and that is an introduction to my little boy. I had a little boy and his name is Jacob and he's very moody today and this is him. He has got the biggest frown on him. It's always the way when you try and start filming and um, Jacob just won't settle at all. So he is so funny when he's trying to nap about light and obviously I've got my uh, filming lights bright in here so he's hating that. So I've had to put his fleece over his face and he's, he's gonna go to sleep. So this is my labour and delivery story. So things obviously are so different now. I have a baby and I have changed. I feel so much in seven weeks. It's crazy how much I've changed, how my view on life has changed and of course my priorities as well. So I wanted to do my labour and delivery story because I'm forgetting things already and I want to well, for him as well, to be able to look in the future and be like, oh my god, that's what my mum went through. So every time he's naughty or mean to me, then I can be like, look what I went through for you. <laughs> so I was due on the 6th of February 2016, and I was adamant I was going to be early. Now, <laughs> this wasn't the case. Anyone that follows me on Instagram will know that I was fed up by the end of it. Now, People always tell you to rest because make the most of your sleep and I was just like shut up. I have had fortunately nine months off of work because obviously I couldn't fly so I was grounded and um, I just thought to myself I am done. Like I am ready for this baby. My house was so so clean. I don't think I could have physically done any more cleaning and I had the nursery ready. All his clothes were ironed and ready to go and I was just just so ready so when the 6th of February came and went I was so disappointed um actually saying that from 37 weeks I was disappointed that I hadn't given birth so obviously when I hit 40 I was like right okay hopefully it'll be really really soon and every day went past and I tried everything so I started bouncing on the medicine ball from I think 34 weeks and his head was so low down. I think at like 37 weeks, I was already three fifths engaged. So I was like, this is gonna be easy. And his head was really, really low. So obviously on his due date, he didn't come and I was so upset. But anyway, I had been drinking raspberry leaf tea as well. Hello. I had been drinking raspberry leaf tea and obviously that didn't happen as well and I had tried everything possible that you could possibly think of um, from pineapple, someone said, to sex, like not very nice, but I was willing to try anything at this point to get him out. Obviously I didn't know if it was a girl or a boy, so that was the added excitement as well. So I tried everything and nothing was working. So I had had two sweeps, I had one on, uh, three days after I was due and then uh, six days after I was due so three days later the first one was unsuccessful and then uh, the next one I had my show anything that anyone's not understand this if you google it it will explain it I don't want to go into too much graphic information <laughs> so I'd had my show and I thought amazing you know I am well on my way um, to delivering and I remember it was Friday the it must have been Friday the 12th and I had had my sweep in the morning I had my show on the Thursday evening I was so excited I thought yes bish bash bosh it's gonna it's gonna happen and then nothing happened and I was just disappointed Saturday the 13th of February I woke up at 1 38 in the morning with a sudden twinge and I was like hmm what's that and I thought it was very very strange and I didn't know what it was um but anyway I thought to myself I am not going to say anything to anyone because I had been doing this for the last like week saying oh I think I've got this or I think I've got that and it resulted in nothing and quite frankly I think I was fed up of hearing my own voice thinking I was going to go into labour my induction had been um booked for the following 
Thursday so I thought to myself well I've just got to wait like five days and he'll be here so I just thought I mean, I'm going to be induced. So at 1.38 I started getting these pains and then two hours later after timing them for two hours they were every six or seven minutes apart. So I got really excited but I thought to myself it's so early in the morning, I don't want to wake up rich because I feel like he needs to get sleep. So I just left it as it was and um, I just kept on timing them. I sat downstairs, so excited, made sure my everything was packed and everything was ready. And then I think by 6 o'clock in the morning I called Bournemouth Maternity Hospital and I said look this is this is what's been happening I've been having you know mild contractions for x amount of time and they said brilliant um as you're only getting one in 10 minutes wait until they're like two in 10 or three in 10 give us a call back so I was like okay so Rich woke up at 7 30 that morning and I said to him I've been having contractions all morning I'm so excited and he was like I'll go and have a shower and get ready and I thought oh yeah fantastic and then by nine o'clock they completely stopped and I was so gutted and disheartened and just like I said fed up I just wanted this baby out and I was just cried and cried and I said oh it's just false pregnancy false labor false pregnancy false labor and that was it I literally just carried on my day so Rich and I went for a long walk that day and then we went to um we went for a food shop and we were the whole day I was absolutely fine, I didn't get anything, no twinges, nothing. And I called up Bournemouth Fraternity again, I said just to let you know they've completely stopped. And they said, don't just keep an eye on them Tash, you know, probably in the next couple of days you should be um, well on your way. Now I've got to say really quickly, is when I had my sweep, um, his head was so low down you could touch it. And I had two sweeps and both midwives said to me, I, they cannot believe I hadn't had the baby already and he hadn't fallen out of me because he was so low. So bearing in mind that this information, I was like, why is this baby not coming? Anyway, so the next thing is I had made dinner and it was six, 10 past six on the Saturday 13th. And suddenly I was eating dinner and I just got this contraction. And I was like, oh my God, I just got another contraction. All of a sudden they were every four to five minutes. And then they were spacing between three minutes and five minutes. Now they usually say if, like, if three and 10, you need to go to hospital. But at this point, I hadn't slept all night, all day, and I was so tired already. I said to Rich, I think it's best that I go up and get into bed and try and get some sleep, which he agreed. So as I went into bed, they came on thick and they came on fast. I was breathing quite well through them, but I just was like, oh my gosh. So I was lying in bed and I just could not for the life of me get any sleep. So at 10 past 10 I think it was like four hours later I thought I can't do this anymore I don't know what is going on I don't know whether or not I am in labor or when I should go because uh because the baby's head was so low um they said to me just be careful because he is so low he might just drop out of you so um give us a call so I gave born for Tanya to a call and they were completely empty and they said why don't you come in and we'll examine you so that was that I called my sister and she came and looked after Holly and um off we trotted down to hospital and when i got there and i got examined i was four and a half centimeters dilated so i could stay and that was it i called my mum my mum turned up i hadn't by any by this point had any gas in there nothing i was actually breathing quite well through them after that the midwife decided that she was going to fill the bathing pool for me and for me to get in because I did want a water bath so by the time I think I was settled and we sorted out mum was there it was about half 11 and I got into the bathing pool and it definitely helped ease the contractions uh, at this point actually I was coping quite well with the pain I thought it's only 30 30 to 40 seconds so um they were quite easy to cope with and um I didn't have any gas in there at this point as well so I was just just being strong <laughs> and then it just seemed like time flew and late like and before you knew it she said to me you've been here four hours we need to examine you to see how far gone you are so off I jumped out of the water and onto the bed to examine me and I was six and a half centimeters dilated in four hours and I just felt knackered like someone had com completely battered and bruised me and I just I just couldn't carry on now I went to a midwife led hospital only so I couldn't have had anything but gas in there um, and at this point I was so so tired as I hadn't slept for like 24 hours um, 
and I had everything, I had my LucasAid, I had snacks, but I just didn't want anything. And I went to the toilet and I remember holding on to Rich and I just cried and I just said, I can't do this. I need to be transferred to pool um, so I can have some drugs because I, I'm too tired and I have only progressed to six and a half centimetres and I don't know how long I can do this for. And he was saying to me, don't worry, you'll be absolutely fine. And then by some miracle, um, I literally looked up and I was like, if anyone's there, please, please just do something because I can't, I can't physically do this anymore. And as I walked back outside, for some weird reason, I started being sick and I was not sick at a thing. It was just like retching. And at that moment, my it was enough for my cervix to completely break because I need to just explain something quickly. Basically, all the midwives were slightly confused because I was already dilated. However, my cervix was still not fully gone. So when you have your show, um, that's your obviously your cervix breaking away in order for the baby to come down. And mine was still showing a little bit thick. So at this point, I was sick. I was stood there and all of a sudden, I was like, retched and my cervix just went Pah! and it was just like blood on the floor like just watery blood and I was like what the hell was that I thought it was my waters but it wasn't it was my cervix so she said to me oh fantastic Tash you know we can we can get back in the pool and we can start like pushing we'll examine you and I was it just gave me that boost because I was so fed up and I thought I can't do this I'm too tired um just gave me that bit of energy to get back in that pool and think to yourself you know um it won't be long so I got back into the pool and I was um nine and a half centimeters dilated at this point and I remember the midwife saying to me two pushes and he'll be out or she'll be out and I was like oh my god amazing well 54 minutes later I was pushing and I was just knackered and to be honest with you I didn't really know when to push now I must say at this point I still hadn't even had any gas in there I tried it and I hated it I don't think I did it properly and I just so I was no pain relief at this point nothing not even paracetamol I had absolutely nothing it got to the point where I was just like right this is it next one I am just gonna push for the life of me and get this baby out and so the contraction came and all of a sudden my body just took over and just I started retching again and the and the baby just like I could feel it coming and it was like I had no control it just came itself and then all of a sudden I had felt obviously because I was in the water this like tch, and that was my waters so I was really confused because you know you see all these films and the waters break and then the baby comes that's not how it works and sometimes people's waters don't even break so my waters broke and at that point I pushed so hard and his head came and oh my god the pain of that head is horrendous and it was like when they say a ring of fire I'm talking a ring of fire it stung so bad and I at that point I was like please get get it out put it out put it out and then finally when I pushed on the next contract uh, contraction like I say I push I didn't my body just took over and it was the strangest feeling anybody that's had a baby naturally will know that it's like blah, blah, blah. it's so strange when people say that but I felt like like him coming out of me like it was like blah, blah, blah. and it was so strange and it was so like I was on all fours giving birth in the water and then I just remember staring at my stomach like oh my god my that my bum's gone and I was back to like my stomach which is normal again and um, I picked him up and I held him in the water but I noticed that he was quite it was quite short like the umbilical cord was quite short so he didn't come out an awful lot um, and then obviously I looked down and I saw a little willy and I was like it's a boy and my husband Rich and my mum was there and we were all crying and it was so emotional Jacob was born at 7.28 in the morning on Sunday the 14th of February so he was a Valentine's baby and it was the most amazing moment of my life and then I was told to get out of the water and um, to deliver my placenta and it wouldn't come. After that things just didn't go to plan um, and 
it was quite traumatic. Uh, what happened was I was in the birthing pool, Mel, my, my midwife, saying to me, you know, if you're bleeding a bit too much, we're going to give you a little injection to in your leg uh, just to get things going um, and also to help deliver the placenta. So I was like, yeah, so she said to me, I'm going to give you the injection. I was like, absolutely fine. So at this point, Jacob was only a couple of minutes old. And then she said to me about the placenta and it just sort of just didn't seem like things were going to plan. I had torn down below, which was obviously the reason for all of the blood. And it, the lights went on full from it being very, very calm and peaceful and dark and lovely to lights on full and a lot of midwives came in. Uh, Rich was told to take his top off and do skin to skin with Jacob. And I remember a midwife came up to me and said to me, because we can't pull your placenta out, it's not coming out. Um, you're gonna have to go to theatre. You'll be transferred to pool hospital and um, you will have to go to theatre. And I remember just staring at her like, what do you mean theatre? And I was so upset. I just, I didn't know how to, I just went numb. They said to me, we'll try one more injection and in 10 minutes we'll see. But at this point I was getting um, like the drips in my arm. Minutes later they came and they pulled the placenta out. But unfortunately they torn the membrane um, in the lining of my tummy. And then the next thing, these three paramedics walked in and they typically had to be three male young par paramedics. And I was just lying there naked, covered in blood, literally like, what? the fuck what am i gonna do uh i remember the midwife turning around and saying sorry you're going to have to go to pool you've lost too much blood and i think by the time i was leaving Bournemouth, i'd lost a liter and a half of blood i remember saying hearing the midwife turn around to rich and say get that baby dressed and go and get the car seat and i thought car seat that's strange it's not coming with me and i turned around and i said to the midwife um where's is he not coming with me and she said no you're our priority the baby's fine and Jacob hadn't even been weighed at this point and I didn't know anything I didn't know I can't even couldn't even remember what he looked like it was all very traumatic I was whizzed off by ambulance blue lighted over to Paul um, and when I got there I was stitched up I was monitored and um, looked after and then when I was there I had um, a second degree tear down below and also because I lost so much blood they had to keep me in to observe me and I was so upset I just didn't want to stay and I just wanted to go home but I was so weak and um, as soon as I was in pool they did all the checks on Jacob um, and Jacob was actually tongue-tied quite severely and um, they had noted that down and at that point I was just like, I just don't want, I don't want to stay here. Like, And then I really wanted my sisters and my brother and his girlfriend to come and see me. And my dad came down and my mum was obviously there. So they all came to see me, which was amazing. Uh, but it was hard though, because I was just so weak, like I said, and, um, you know, traumatised and absolutely knackered. Like I just didn't know what was going on. I had this baby who I missed out on the most important time of bonding when he was first born. He is the most amazing thing I have ever, probably my greatest accomplishment in life is him and I love him to pieces and I would go through, although now I'm classified as high risk for any more pregnancies, I would go for it 10 times over for him and he is just the best baby I could possibly hope for. I honestly can say that anybody who is pregnant and expecting or wanting to fall pregnant it's the best feeling in the world and no matter what it's so rewarding and when you've got your little baby in your arms and you're staring at it and it's just the most amazing little thing it's priceless and like I said like you will just absolutely love it so that is my labour and delivery story and follow me on Instagram at Tasha Parker because I baby spam on there if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with him because he is growing so fast and every single person says cherish the moment because they grow so fast I can't even explain to you where the seven weeks have gone I have no concept of time anymore it just flies and I can't believe it's seven weeks but thank you ever so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this and I will do lots more I with 
with Jacob. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, then please like it and give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Any videos that you want me to do, um, please comment below. And thank you very much. Take care, guys. Bye.